Hello guys and welcome to another video. I'm Adi from Pixel Profits and this is a 2019 updated version of my previous guide on the best recording settings for Marillis Action. In this version we're going to be using program version 3.90 and they've added a few features and changed the interface somewhat. So I thought I'd go through it again as some people have asked me if I could do an updated version. I thought I would help you guys out by doing so. So I'm going to do it in the same format as I did before and that is going to mean that I'm going to explain some of the options and what they actually mean and what they do rather than just telling you click this, click this and you're done because I think understanding the program and the options actually helps you to troubleshoot things, actually helps you to understand that when you change something you may or may not get better or worse quality and so on. So I think it's important to understand and it will help you with other programs in the future also. Okay, so starting off then we have our recording directory. Two recommendations I have. The first one is to use the fastest drive you can to record to. And if you can, that should be a solid state hard drive or something along those lines. Also, if you have the option, if you have a separate drive that you can record to that isn't running your games or applications, then try and record to that drive. I've had some issues before where I tried to record to the same drive as the game I was playing on and it caused sort of dropouts during the video so just portions of it would be missing and as soon as I switched to the second hard drive even though it's exactly the same drive as the one that was running the game as in the same model and the same brand and everything um, the performance just suddenly increased and recordings were completely normal. Now it's only on one or two particular games but I think it can make a difference so it's worth considering. All right so I'm recording in screen mode now, but of course you can often record in game mode. There's there's one difference really. All the all the settings are the same, but there's one thing that's different, and that is that on the screen mode you select which desk, uh, desktop you want to record. And I've got three monitors, so I'm on my second monitor now. And in game mode, instead of this, you'll see an option called time shift, and time shift is um, an option that allows you to record to a separate file. The last few minutes of gameplay and I think I've never tried it actually because it's a new feature but I believe that it's like Nvidia's shadow play where if you hit the hotkey it records the last few minutes of footage to a separate file even if you weren't recording at the time if that makes sense so it's like action is saving it into memory and it's going to be able to just push that part of the file over to a separate file so you can capture great moments you weren't expecting to have. Okay, so starting with the file format, AVI is the uh, choice here. The reason for that is that it's much higher quality. It's a raw high quality file that you can edit later in your program of choice. But you also have the options of MP4. MP4 will be much smaller files, but it has compression already applied to it, so it's not going to be as good quality. So I always go with AVI. Hardware acceleration is only relevant if you're choosing MP4 and here it's going to depend on your hardware of course as well. I have Nvidia so if you also have Nvidia then you should select this option here in my opinion. There's another option which is high, efficient, uh, high efficiency video coding and basically that's a better encoding method in many senses. It, you can effectively have the same quality file about half the file size. But the problem with it is that this particular encoding method is supported by pretty much everything, including YouTube. The other one isn't. So I would select this one because although you might save some file space with the other method, the high, high quality one, um, it's really going to probably cause you some problems with uploading things and playing it potentially on certain devices unless it's dumbed down into this version which it probably will be and it will be on YouTube for example. So select this one, there's nothing wrong with it, you'll see from this video you know the quality is good, um, you probably won't notice much difference, it's really mainly the file size that's going to be of concern. Alright so video size original, this is the um, so the resolution that you're running your um, display at that you're using. I have three different ones, I've got two 1440 and one that's 1080 and if I select original here, it will just choose whichever screen 
I'm using and run it at that aspect ratio and that resolution. So I've got a 21 by 9 screen, which is 1440. And if I put original here, even though uh, 1440 isn't an option here, it will actually record at that if you select original. So I always go with that. Unless you've got a reason you want to you know, down the quality for any reason, just select this. I keep this at 60 frames a second because uh, I think that's the optimal setting for games, for recording games. Um, obviously, make sure you can achieve 60 frames per second in the game you're playing uh, consistently. Otherwise, it might not be so good. But you can put it down to 30 frames per second if you want. But I wouldn't recommend it if you've got a PC. Try and record at 60, even if it means you put the graphics settings down a little on the game because it gives that much smoother crisper experience for the person watching if you're recording a desktop sort of recording video like this there's no reason you can't use 30 frames per second but i've just chosen to keep it on that for now because i'm too lazy to change it um so active screen we've talked about it's the monitor i'm on all right primary sound device so this is the system sounds this is where your game or application sound comes from so in my case i've got a second output on the rear of my computer that I use for my headphones. And so the sound's coming through my headphones, so this is what I'm selecting here, the headphones. Volume can be 100% because this is more relevant in um, maybe you know a live streaming scenario where you want to balance the sort of system sound with your microphone sound, but you don't need to worry about that for recording in this way. Okay, secondary sound device is the microphone. You can see here I'm using a Rode Podcaster to record this video on. Uh, this has some additional options. Again, the volume doesn't matter, but the additional options do. So let's have a look. So recording mode, uh, always record. So I'm always recording my microphone the whole time that I'm recording anything. And I'm recording the microphone into separate audio track. Now, this is really important, in my opinion, because you need to be able to separate the microphone audio from the game audio so that you can adjust them both to be suitable for your video. Audio balance, you've got mono, stereo. Uh, if you drag it either way, it's going to be mono. Basically, you're talking, you have one mouth, so you have one sound source. So to have a stereo recording of your voice for just a let's play or a voiceover, it's just not worth having stereo. It, it doesn't make any difference. You've got one sound source. The only time you want to have stereo is if you, you know, you're singing or something like that, and you want to sort of mix that and, and, and adjust the level to left and right, you know, to match the instruments and blah, blah, blah. But we aren't going into all that because we don't need to for this particular purpose. Then we have some noise reduction options. This is a new feature. Um, basically what it does is if you're recording something and you've got some little clicks or pops or whatever in the background or even some hiss from your computer fans, then you can activate this and cut out that background noise. So anything below uh, minus 49 dB or whatever you set it to, it will block out. Now, I prefer to do this in Audacity because you have more options on how to control it. And this is just a standard, you know, this is how it works and, and that's it. This is the level and nothing else. I find that sometimes this causes some, I don't know, some uh, distortion and, you know, undesirable effects to your voice. So that's how my testing so far. So I don't use it here. But if you were live streaming, for example, you could consider using it, maybe cut out the sound of your keyboard or whatever it is you want to do. Okay, so moving on. And that's about it for this screen. The only one we again need to make sure of is enable additional audio recording into a separate audio file and the microphone is what we're going to record into a separate audio file. All right, so we skip live streaming and we go on to audio. So some of these settings affect the settings you selected over here. So stick with what I've got and it should be okay. Audio device, just go with system default. If you start selecting other things here, it screws with the settings you put in the first screen there. Output format is WAV, so a WAVE if you want to call it that. And that is a high quality, again, raw file that we can edit later. So you can have MP4 as well, but again, it will be compressed and lower quality. We don't need to select anything here uh, because we've already ch changed this in the previous screen. So just leave this uh, unchecked, but allow multi-channel audio recording, you can definitely check. So that brings us on to the settings tab and we've got the general settings. 
I've made the user interface bigger for you guys so you can see it. The only thing really relevant here to think about, for me at least, is enable Action RCU, which is the Android app for Action, and that allows you to stop and start the recording, or a really good feature, pause the recording, and then when you resume the recording, it will put everything into the same file that you were previously recording. So it won't make separate files when you're starting and stopping recording. So that pause button, as far as I know, isn't available within the action itself. There might be a hotkey for it, we can have a look later. But doing it from your phone allows you to do that, to pause it, and it also allows you to monitor the frame rate and all sorts of stuff of the game. So it's very easy to set up, I have no trouble with that. So it's pretty good, give it a go. Um, okay, next one. Video, of course, if you can, Ultra. Um, if you're using MP4, then turn the bitrate right up to get the best um, quality. We have input range here. We've got 0 to 255 full or limited. So this is to do with limited was used by sort of maybe TV type recordings, um, especially older TVs. And the full is more for monitors, so PC monitors. Now it's basically, I won't go into too much detail, but it's how it records color, particularly the black and white levels and the scale that it measures them at. So always select full. It'll often, uh, if you are playing it on something that can't handle it, it will get downgraded anyway. So most things are good at switching between the two if they need to. So go with the best one. Use multi-core recording allows you to use more of your CPU cores to record. If you deselect this, you'll be using a single core of your processor, which obviously usually will result in worse performance, but it could Increase, um, improve things in some scenarios. So if you're having problems, laggy or anything weird, you could always try unselecting that. Record the mouse cursor, as you can see, it's doing that now because I want you to see what I'm pointing at. And we can visualize mouse clicks as well, which basically adds a little animation to the mouse, but I don't think that's necessary for this kind of video, but you can if you feel like that's something you need to make it easier for people to see. Okay, going on to audio. Record the sound, yes. Allow multi-channel recording, again, yes. And this uh, bitrate for the audio, just keep it a default, because then it will use your system default. Um, you can change it if you need to, but I just keep it a default. HUD, um, I don't record it at any time or even show it when I'm using Action. Um, if I do want that, I can use the app on my phone. I prefer that. So you can select what you want here, of course. It's up to you if you want to show that. Exporting settings, so this is just for exporting directly to YouTube or some other platform and you want to use hardware acceleration for video encoding and again you've got to select a method, we've got two options, as I said this one's the best, so select that if you've got NVIDIA, if you've got something else I can't really help you there because I don't know what settings you're going to have, there's a few variables I guess so I can only cover the ones I've got. Um, export mouse cursor, yes we talked about that, we want you to see the mouse and the visualizations, you might as well select this box. Obviously it's going to be controlled by whether you've even selected visualizations, but the visualizations, if you have selected them, you obviously want to export them as well, I guess. So just leave this on and it will then be sort of a default option if you are to turn them on later. You won't be thinking, why is it not recording my visualizations? And where do you want to export it to? Self-explanatory. All right. Then that just brings us onto the hotkeys then. The only thing I'll say here is make sure you don't select hotkeys that are also hotkeys in the game or application you're running. So for example, F5 is a common one for quick save in things like Skyrim, for example, and most other sort of games, RPGs and stuff. So if you are using this, say, to start and stop recording, you're going to have some issues with uh, your video. Every time you quick save, you're going to be stopping or starting the recording. So that's not desirable. So just think about that. Um, I've only really changed two of them. I, I have record uh, video and record audio. And in fact, with the settings I have here, I only need to record um, with one hotkey and it starts both of them up anyway. All right, guys, um, that's about it, I think. If you've got any questions, of course, feel free to ask and I'll do my very best to answer them. Also, let me know in the comments below if this video helped you and if you've recorded uh, good quality recordings using this guide. If this has helped you guys, 
please, please feel free to give me a like. That would be really appreciated. And if you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to see when we release new videos. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. Really appreciate your time. Best of luck with your, with your recordings. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.